Hey, 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 she went fucking for me. Nah, nah, nah. Don't come around me, I can brand new. When I was broke, I couldn't pull a hose. I wasn't stacking dough, I was a lame on the low. What up, y'all? Long time no see. It's your boy Trigger Near Trip, aka Trippy Longstocking, aka Sir Trippington, aka Tripzilla, whatever you want to call me, whatever I was formerly to you. I know. I go by Trigger Near Trip now. And we just gonna have a conversation. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen y'all, since we got to chop it up. A lot of y'all know what's going on with me and what I got going on. And I feel like it's time that I speak on that. So here I am, here to speak on the birth of Trillionaire Trip. I'm gonna take y'all along with me on my journey. And uh, I'm gonna tell y'all what y'all can do to help me move forward in this journey. You know what I'm saying? So that's where we're gonna do it. So for a lot of y'all that don't know, uh, I do have stage four lung cancer. Uh, that is something that I've been battling. Uh, I had surgery in August. Um, long story short, they found a spot on my lungs. I had surgery to get it cut out in August when they went in for the surgery to cut the spot out. That's when they saw something else. And yeah, they were like, oh snaps. Let's get the rest of it out while we can. And then they took all the samples out that they needed, they tested it, and then it came back that I had lung cancer. Um, so then after that realization that I had cancer, of course I had to start talking to cancer doctors and cancer specialists and all that other stuff. And we had to figure out, okay, he has cancer, yes, but let's see where else this cancer is. Let's see if it went anywhere else. And the thing that makes it stage four is it went from my lungs, now it's in my liver. And that was a lot to deal with. Um, I was ultimately in the hospital for like 10 days recovering. I got some pretty uh, handsome scars to show off. I ain't gonna show those to you right now in this episode, maybe later. But yeah, so that happened in August, September is when I got restated stage four. And now October is when I started the chemo drugs. So luckily for me, I have a rare cancer. Um, and the kind of rare cancer that I have is a mutation. So luckily there's drugs that are specifically made that's gonna target the specific exact mutation of cancer that I have. So I don't have to go through any chemotherapy. I don't have to go through any radiation right now. And luckily for right now, I don't have to go back under the knife. You know, that, that's a good thing. So at this point, we're waiting to see if the drugs are gonna do its thing, see if the drugs is gonna shrink this thing in my, in my liver. And we're gonna see if it's gonna take care of the spots in my lungs. And then once it gets small enough and it gets contained enough, we'll probably go the radiation route where we can zap it out of there. Going through that experience, man, it, it was rough. Um, pretty much going from a healthy 30 year old military member like myself, where I'm always doing something, I'm always up to not doing anything at all. It, it was rough. It was a rough time. It was a lot of uh, things I had to do. I had to do a lot of reflection, a lot of self work, a lot of looking at myself in the mirror. It was rough. It was not easy. So in that, that's when I started looking for ways to try to reinvent myself. Um, I don't look at this as necessarily a 100% bad thing. Is does it suck that I have a rare cancer? Yeah, yeah it, it sucks and it definitely has its days. But to me, I think it's a sign. Um, from the higher powers, from God, whatever you believe in, whoever you believe in, it's, it's a sign that I just need to sit down and refocus and reprioritize the things that are important in my life. And with that, I've always had a shield to where, you know what I'm saying, I could hide from certain things. And once that got taken away from me, like I had nothing to do but look at myself and think. And, you know what I'm saying, think about ways to better myself. Think about things that are right there in my face, issues that I'm dealing with right in my face. Like I said, I've always had an out, whether it was my career, whether it was a deployment or a TGY, or, you know what I'm saying, whether it was going out with the homies, but I got lung cancer, so I'm sitting so I'm sitting in the house all the time. I can't go nowhere, I can barely breathe, Is I can barely walk around my house at one point in time, so like I had nothing but time on my hands to sit and reflect. 
And that's when I decided to just reinvent myself. Um, and not saying that I'm a brand new person, cause I mean, I'm not, but mentally, you know what I'm saying? Mentally, I'm deciding to go in a different direction. So that's when I was like, huh, what can I do to kind of recreate myself, reinvent myself? And then that's when Trainer Trip came into my mind. Like, I'm gonna keep Trip, cause that's me. I'm Trip, I'm always be Trip. But this is a different phase, this is a different stage of my life. And trillionaire, like, I wanna do everything to the trillest power, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bun B, uh, the definition of trill and all that good stuff. Uh, do everything to the trillionth power. Uh, and that's more than a million, that's more than a billion. I wanna go, I wanna do everything to the trillionth power. Um, I want a trillion dollars. Uh, I want a trillion good days. I want a trillion more days to live. You know, I, that's just my mind frame with it. So some of the biggest things that I've had to overcome with dealing with stage four lung cancer, it's more mental than it was physical. Of course, there's pain pills and patches and medicine that you can take for physical pain, but mental, that mental work, yeah, that hit different. That mental work is gonna hit different, man. Like the mental, when it, you start dealing with mental stuff, it, 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 it's exhausting. It can be more than the physical pain because you can sleep that physical pain off with that mental, that mental piece is always gonna be there. And that's probably one of the toughest things that I've ever had to face. And I'm not perfect. Like now I see a psychologist, I see a therapist. Like I'm not afraid to say that. Like I was struggling. My life was changing before my eyes as I knew it. And when you're dealing with drastic changes like that on top of the stigma that we have concerning cancer, like, dang, that's like, everything crashing in on me at once and mentally I, I was out of there. Like, I was acting out very bad and I needed help. And like, it just furthermore demonstrated to me that I needed to change. Furthermore showed me that there's things that I need to do within myself to get me through this because I could sit around and cry and be upset all day that I have cancer. But on the other hand, that's another day for me to get better. It's another day for me to be positive. It's another day for me to do something that's gonna further my health, expand my lifespan. You know? There's no point in sitting around crying and moping and being sad about it. You got it. I mean, there's people who have beat cancer. Like, let's be real. Just cause it stays for cancer doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Yeah, there's plenty of people out there who have beat the odds. A lot of people beat the odds every day. Whether that be you beating the odds at your job, whether that be you beating the odds when people betting against you. Like in life, you're gonna have obstacles to overcome and you're not gonna always be the favorite. Sometimes you're gonna have to play the underdog. And I see this situation with me having stage four cancer is no different. Like, I've been bet, on, bet against before. You know, I've had to overcome obstacles before and this is no different. Um, with that being said, man, my family and my friends definitely helped me out. Like. I definitely couldn't do this without my support circle. Um, I have, yes, I have a whole team of doctors and care professionals and medical professionals, but that home piece, that family piece, that friend piece, that's definitely what helped me get through it. Like, I have a wife that, you know what I'm saying, held it down. Like, she took on everything. She was in the hospital with me from start to finish. Put it with me on the days where I was just being stubborn. She was there with me when I was screaming and hollering and crying about the pain that I was going through and then just feeling depressed. And she was there to help me through it all. And I don't know if I could find, another, I don't know if I could find or think of another person that, you know what I'm saying, could sit there and go through all that and still be positive and still be anxious for the next day and still be positive, you know what I'm saying? Because even like for me, like I, it was, I was a lot, I'm a handful. So I'm just thankful to have her. And then my family, um, everybody reached out to me as soon as they found out. I didn't tell a lot of people and that was all wrong on me to not say anything just to go through that alone. But uh, it was just some man stuff I had to let go as far as my ego and I had to let people in for the first time. And it, it was uncomfortable, but I had to realize that there are people out there that care about me. I had to realize that there are people out there that want me to be okay. I had to realize that there's people out there that love me. Before then, it was like, yeah, you love me, but you love me from right there, and I'm gonna make sure that you stop right there at that line. I had to let that barrier go. I had to put that, let that wall down, and let everybody in, and let everybody see me in my weakest state, 
And that was tough to do too, even with my spouse. Like that was that was rough. Cause nobody wants to be seen like that where I can't do anything. Like, dang, I'm on a breathing machine. I'm on a ventilator. I'm hurting. I ain't never felt no pain like that before in my life. And to be experiencing that and just to know there's nothing you can do but sit there and go through it and lean on the hopes and the prayers and positivity from your friends and your family. So going forward, man, I want to tell my story to motivate and inspire others. Like, it doesn't have to be stage four cancer. It could be just be depression. It could just be relationship issues. Whatever you're going through, man, it's not the end of the world. I want to motivate those who need to hear it. I want to inspire people who need to be inspired, who want to be inspired. There's tons of things that you can do to be better. There's tons of ways that you can better yourself. And I want to be a living testament of that. So with that being said, man, um, on to a little bit of, on a lighter note, um, some things I've been doing since I've been off, like I, I ain't been to work since like July. And I don't know if I'm probably, I'm probably not gonna go back to work for the rest of the year, who knows, man. I'm just taking a day at a time. But since I have all this newfound free time, um, I have found myself learning new things, uh, trying new things. Cause I'm in the house all the time and like the medicine has some weird side effects. So I have to kind of shelter myself and make sure that I'm taking care of, making sure that I'm straight. I get tired a lot. So it's only so much I can do. My time is limited. I've had to pick up new hobbies. Uh, I don't game as much. I do game, but not as much. There was a point in time where I could game for like seven, eight hours. You leave me at home all day, I can be on the game that whole time. But now, like, I, I, when I, it's time for me to go to sleep, I'm out of there. I need to go to sleep. I'm cutting the game off. I'm going to sleep. But that being said, I mean, I'm looking to start streaming. I'm setting my setup now. Uh, I'm on Call of Duty. Um, I got 2K. I got Madden. I want to start streaming for y'all. You know what I'm saying? So for all y'all out there that are looking at this, watching this, man, whatever y'all can do to help your boy out get started streaming, man, subscribe to my Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Follow me on YouTube, subscribe, whatever, man. Let's get let's let's do some let's do some fun stuff, man. Life is short and I don't want to spend my last days or the rest of my days or the rest of my life, however much longer time I have, I don't want to spend that being sad. I don't want to spend that being depressed. I wanna have a ball. I wanna have a blast. I'm here to have fun and that's what I wanna do. So um I've been learning about stocks and bonds. I've been doing a little bit of trading on Robinhood, losing some money. I lost some money today. I'm hurt about that actually, but I'm gonna try to make it back tomorrow. Uh, learning the stock market, learning how to trade options. Uh, man, one day I got so bored, I painted this wall back here. Like I just jumped up one morning, I had a burst of energy, and I just started throwing tape. Just started throwing tape on the wall, and then went and got to went to Home Depot, and then I went and painted it. And then the next day after it dried, I put all the paint off, and I was like, Wow, ta-da! I think I posted that on Instagram, or the story. But yeah, man, it was dope, man. So, uh, that's what I got going on. Um, I might go back to TikTok. My social media presence hasn't been what it normally is. And that's because, again, I've been taking time to reinvent myself and um, work on ways to better me. Um, I wanna create multiple streams of income. I've been thinking about that. Uh, just starting my legacy and building that generational wealth while I can, you know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna be young forever, so. While I'm here and alive and full of energy and good ideas, I want to put that to use. So, uh, yeah, man, make sure y'all follow me on Twitch. I think it's Tripsky90. Make sure y'all follow me on Instagram. It's going to be Trillionaire Trip. And, uh, yeah, man, wherever y'all see me, man, just say what's up, man. I'm here for y'all. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, so uh, y'all can definitely expect to see me throwing some stuff up. Um, having lung, stage four lung cancer, man, it definitely was a game changer for me. It, I learned a lot going through this journey. Like, I didn't even know that you had, your lung is not just one lung over here and another lung over here. You, your left lung has three lobes and your other lung got some different lobes and they work together like, yeah, mind blown. Like, but it took me some time to kind of just you know what I'm saying? Embrace it. You know, that's just like, like, it is what it is and it is what it's gonna be. You know, you just gotta be able to embrace it and accept it. And the sooner as you do that, the better off you'll be. And that's where I'm at, man. I just wanna be happy. I just wanna be helpful. Um, I wanna be successful. And I'm on my way to doing that. Showing their trip is gonna do that. So, and that's all I got for y'all. I don't know how often I'm gonna be vlogging. Y'all drop down in the comments, man, and let me know what other videos I think I should drop, what other content y'all think I should drop, man. Make sure y'all go follow me on social media. 
Um, I definitely want to do a fundraiser or some type of event for, for the month of November. I know it's Thanksgiving and Black Friday and it's Every Monday, so all y'all getting y'all money together. I'm not asking for no money. I just want to kick it with my people, man. Let's jump on the game together. Let's run some games of 2K. Let's run some games of Madden. Let's do a tournament for uh, lung cancer awareness, like something. So get in the comments, man. Let me know what y'all want to do. Give me some ideas. And hey, man, y'all be cool till next time. Train the trip, man. Y'all be safe. Peace. When I was broke, I couldn't pull hoes. I wasn't stacking dough, I was a lame on the low.